So I got a great question from a viewer that helped me understand that I need to talk a little bit about the importance of working with a balanced digestive system. So I really appreciate the questions that you guys are asking in the comments. It really helps me understand what I really need to focus on when we're making these videos. And if one side of digestion is not working correctly, or maybe just one side is working really well and the other side is not working so great, it can create a lot of symptoms and even health issues. And some of these problems can go on for years or decades. So in this video, I'm gonna help you understand the most common problems that can come about when the digestive system is not working in a balanced manner and steps you can take to improve it. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So with what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about two different sides of digestion. And there's a lot of other components of the digestive process than what we're going to talk about today. The digestion can start up there in the mouth when the body starts to make saliva, even when we think about food. So there's a lot of other things that go on with digestion, but we're going to talk about the main size of digestion, the food being acidified here in the stomach, and then the alkaline bile that comes down from the gallbladder and all the other things that get triggered by that action taking place. So when we're looking at the different sides of digestion, we're really looking at an acid side and an alkaline side of digestion. So when things go wrong on either side of that, it can create a, a lot of trouble. And it was over on our video for possible troubles when first starting Betaine HCL that user 80, 20, 40 something or other said, what if someone is leaning more towards acidity rather than alkaline? And when someone says this to me, I really need to understand what they're trying to say. And I don't know user 80, 2D, 40 or whatever it was. Remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anybody medical advice and I don't really know what their situation is. So I can't really give them specific advice, but we can talk about some of these things in general. And when someone says this, the first thing I want to know is why do they think that they're leaning more alkaline? There's a lot of uh, idiot pH gurus out there that just make people feel like, oh, my body is too alkaline or oh, my body is too acidic. And that's really not how it works. That's a really big bucket of fiction because there's different compartments of the body that should be different pHs. This stomach should be very acidic. This small intestine should be less acidic. And then there's other areas of the body that should be more on the alkaline side. So when someone says my body is alkaline, they're usually wrong. They're usually doing something like, are they looking at pHs? Oh, I tested my urine pH and it's very alkaline. So my body is alkaline. So that's the first thing I wanna make sure someone isn't doing. And if this is new information for you and you are confused about that, we'll put a link to our video in the description below for the truth about pH balance. And that'll walk you through understanding what we really need to look at when we're looking at those pHs in the body. Another thing I want to know is when he says, oh, I'm leading too more towards acidity than the alkaline, does he mean that he has too much stomach acid? Is that why he feels that he's leaning more on the acid side? And if he feels like he has too much stomach acid, is he right? Is he accurate about that? Because there's a wide belief out there that when someone has like acid reflux, that they have too much stomach acid. So that excess acid is coming back up and burning them. But the reality that we understand now is that acid reflux actually usually comes from not having enough stomach acid. And then the small amount of acid that they have is coming back up and burning them because they don't have enough acid to trigger this lower esophageal sphincter to close. There's a little sphincter at the bottom of the esophagus that's triggered by stomach acid. And when someone doesn't have enough stomach acid or there's some situation in the stomach that is neutralizing the acids that they're producing, then the small amount will come back up and burn them. But a lot of people who are getting reflux have this thought of, oh, I have too much acid. So it's not a problem of not having enough acid for me. I must have too much acid. What should I do then? So if that's confusing to you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on why do I have acid reflux that digs into that a whole lot more. And then finally, is someone saying that they're leaning too far on the acidity side because maybe they have a loose stool that's coming out too hot and so they think that everything is too acidic. And so let's look at some of these things to understand what the signs are really trying to tell us when we're seeing these digestive symptoms come up. Because if we understand what the signs are telling us, 
we can get an idea of which side of digestion may need a little bit of help. And the biggest problem that I see is that someone will read one of our books or take one of our courses or see a video of something explaining how to fix either side of these digestive malfunctions and they'll take steps to improve it, but they'll improve one side faster than the other side. And when you create an imbalance in that digestive function like that, it can create all new symptoms or magnified symptoms. So let's kind of understand what's going on when we're seeing those things. So in case you're new here, when we're looking at the acid side, this is HCL production or hydrochloric acid that our body makes in the stomach when we consume food. And it's very important to be able to acidify that food so that we can break it down. And that HCL is very crucial for us to be able to break down proteins into those elemental amino acids that the body uses as rebuilding blocks. So if you can't break protein down correctly, you can't give your body the nutrients that it needs to rebuild itself. So that's very important to be able to break down our food correctly, but that acid is also the barrier that keeps all the bad guys out. So when these varmints come in on the food that we're eating, they're supposed to die in that acid bath in the stomach. So if someone is not making enough stomach acid, which can happen for a wide variety of reasons, then they're not able to acidify the food so they can break it down. They can't break proteins down into amino acids. And also the front door is open. So all these bad guys come in, they set up camp, they have a keg party, they raise their kids. It's a great time for them because the environment is set up for them to thrive. There's no acid to wipe them out when they come in. So they're like, woohoo, this is a good time. So that's the important functions of that acid side. And when we look at the alkaline side, we're really talking about bile flowing correctly from the gallbladder. So bile is this soapy substance that's made by the liver and then it's stored in the gallbladder where it gets concentrated. So when these acids leave the stomach and this acidity goes into the duodenum, that triggers this gallbladder to squirt the alkaline bile down to help neutralize those acids. So that's important that we want to help neutralize acids leaving the stomach, but bile also helps us emulsify or break down our dietary fats. Now there's other actions that also help neutralize things. There's bicarb that comes from the pancreas. We also get enzymes that help us digest our food correctly. But a lot of those actions seem to be triggered by these other actions up here. And when they're not working correctly, sometimes there's this uh, snowball effect of really nothing working correctly. And we just get more and more symptoms and more and more troubles. So that's why we really need both of these sides working correctly. It's very common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. And then it can't come down and neutralize these acids and trigger these other things to happen emulsify our fats so we can access fat soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. All those things are important, right? So that's a really big deal. So we want both of those things happening, but another big reason why we want both of those things happening is if you ever did that stupid volcano thing that we did in the third grade where you mix the, the vinegar with the baking soda and when you mix that acid with the alkaline, it creates that fizzy craziness and ooh, it's a volcano. So that Action is very important because those opposite pHs colliding creates like this sizzle that really helps us bust the food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. So this alkaline bile side is very important to create that sizzle so that we can really access the nutrients in the food we're eating. That's why we're eating that food. So you can see that both sides are important and since it's very common for either side to be malfunctioning, a lot of people might have one side working and not the other, or they might just have both sides not really working. And what's interesting is that when neither side is working, a lot of times a person won't have a lot of these symptoms that we're going to talk about because they're both malfunctioning. So let's look at some of these symptoms that can happen when maybe HCL is working well, but bile is not. So that's an imbalance in that digestive process because one side's working well and the other is not. So if stuff is being acidified in the stomach, when it goes to leave, it's, this bile is not neutralizing it. So what happens is this acidic product continues to move through the intestinal tract. And remember that acid is made to break down protein. Well, guess what your intestinal tract is made of? 
Yeah, it's protein. So those acids will continue to basically break down the lining of the intestinal tract and the body doesn't want that to happen. So it, it says, oh, I'm going to bring all the water that I can to cool this off and then I'm going to rush it out the back door and then we come lifting off the toilet like a rocket. So that's something that can happen when one side's working well, but the other is not. As we can see loose stool issues. And when the, everything is screaming through the intestinal tract, we're not having time to really assimilate those nutrients. You can't assimilate those into the small intestinal lining like we're supposed to. It's all screaming through the system. So it's very important to correct any loose stool issues. And loose stool issues can be caused by other things. We have lots of videos on that. This is just one of the possible causes. But that's one of the reasons why this bile flow is so important so it can come to help slow things down. We don't want everything screaming through the system. Now, if we're looking at things that can happen when maybe the bile flow side is working well, but the acid side is not, well, now things are not being acidified correctly. So when they eventually break down, and they usually break down by process of rotting and fermenting, which can take a lot longer for it to leave the stomach. Maybe somebody feels like, eh, hey, food just kind of sits there like a rock in my stomach for hours and hours. So when it finally moves out, there's not enough acidity to really trigger this alkaline bile to come down. So when the food finally comes down, maybe there's enough fats in there to actually trigger the bile to come down. Because if there's not enough acidity, it's not going to trigger that bile to come down. But sometimes if there's enough fats in what we eat, that can help trigger this bile to come down. But if it comes down, now it's going to alkalize things even more. But this food was already leaning too far on the alkaline side because there wasn't enough stomach acid. So now this alkalizes it more and things move through our intestinal tract at a pace according to their acidity level. So if this is very alkaline, it's going to move very slow. That means it's going to become more dry and more hard and more difficult to move and we can create these chronic constipation issues. Again, there's other causes of chronic constipation. I have entire books that I've written on, on that topic. There's a variety of issues that can come about, but this is a common issue. And we see this a lot to where we need to understand how to read the signs that we're seeing. Because someone will take steps, oh, I'm going to take steps to improve this bile flow, and maybe they are very effective with the steps that they use, but maybe they're taking steps to help acidify the stomach, but that's going to take longer for them. Maybe they have circumstances that are neutralizing all the acids that they're putting in the stomach. So now this side is not working as well as this side. So we're going to see things become more alkaline, really slow down, and the person can become very constipated. They'll be like, oh man, I, I took steps to fix my digestion and I'm worse now. Because they're not reading the signs the way that they need to. They need to understand what these signs are telling them. And we also hear the opposite of that. If you fix bile flow much faster than you do this stomach acid side, if this becomes alkaline enough, then that over alkalinity can irritate this intestinal lining just like the over acidity can. And they could rush through there and squirt out the back door just like they did when it was overly acidic because that alkalinity is irritating the intestinal lining. So you might see someone improve bile flow, take steps, oh, I'm going to thin this bile out so it flows better, and now I have diarrhea. Well, they might need to take steps to fix this side so that things can come together and come to the right pH of the acidity and the alkalinity, and then things will move through at an appropriate pace. And I've had people ask me, does the body have like a self-correcting mechanism to where when one side of digestion is not working correctly, maybe it'll turn off the other side. And I don't think that's the case because we see people that suffer for years and decades with one side working better than the other side. But there do seem to be some mechanisms that kind of have this self-balancing situation going. Like if someone's making stomach acid but their bile is not flowing correctly or maybe they've had the gallbladder removed so bile is just kind of trickling down there all the time. For some people that'll work great and for others it's not enough bile uh, at one time to really help neutralize these acids so that gallbladder being removed ends up creating a lot of trouble. And we'll put a link in the description below for six steps if you've lost your gallbladder that can be really helpful. But this can be a scenario where when this is working well and the bile is not working well, then you're not getting that sizzle and really getting all the minerals and all the nutrients out of the food that you're eating. 
And to make hydrochloric acid, your body needs these minerals and other nutrients so that it can make that hydrochloric acid. So over time, with bile not flowing correctly, it can reduce the amount of minerals and nutrients that you can access from your food. And as that diminishes, then maybe it can restrict the body's ability to make that hydrochloric acid. So that's one reason that someone might not be making enough stomach acid. The body just doesn't have the resources to do that. And same thing here, if someone is not making enough stomach acid over time, even if their bile is flowing correctly, then the bile is not being called on as often because there's no acidity coming down here to trigger the gallbladder to squirt that bile down there. So when that happens, less and less bile moves through. And remember the gallbladder's job is to concentrate that bile. So if the bile is just sitting there and not moving down, it will continue to concentrate until it concentrates into sludge or, or even stones. And then it's really not going to flow correctly. So now you have two sides that are not working correctly. And what's interesting is that some people will do better with both sides being broken because now the stool is not too acidic and it's not too alkaline and it'll kind of move through at an appropriate pace even though they're really not breaking that food down well enough to get all the nutrients out of that food, that can create trouble down the road. But in the short term, they're like, yeah, I, I poop every few days and it's just fine and I don't have loose or constipation. It just kind of goes through. So sometimes both sides being broken can be even better for the person's experience than one side working well and the other side being broken. It's really about the balance of the digestive system that helps the person feel and, and sometimes even function better. And the reason that this can be difficult to really correct is that because there's other malfunctions that can cause troubles to these systems. It's not always just about one side or the other. A person can have an overgrowth in their stomach or the small intestine and the waste from that overgrowth can be very alkaline and further alkalizing these situations. So there's other things that have to be considered and that's kind of what we had this video about possible troubles when first starting HCL. Some people when they first start HCL will receive magnified symptoms when they first start and they don't understand that they're having those symptoms because they really need that HCL and they might need to take other steps to correct you know, an overgrowth or something that's making this HCL magnify some of their symptoms like reflux or more bloating and things like that. So that video goes over that. If you've tried HCL and had some difficulty with it, that video will help you understand why and steps you can take to correct that. But you can see why it's important to have both sides working. That's what really helps us actually digest our food so we can get the nutrients out of that food and also keeps the food that we eat from creating all kinds of symptoms and problems. So if you don't know where you fall on that, you can jump over right now and check out either our video on 10 signs of low stomach acid or 10 signs of poor bile flow to see if either of those issues might be needing some attention from you. I can't wait to hear about your results.